So the first one that's uh, just uh, measuring, um, it's uh, uh, asking you basically things you've read. Um, question three, four. All right, question four looks like it has some um, calculation. It says to help you develop some intuition. All right. Um, sorry, falling asleep. Uh, it says a typical small electric device is powered by a battery whose resistance can change to get a sense of amount of, uh, uh, calculate amount of current flowing through a register of 6K on powered uh, by a battery of voltage of 4.4. Um, I like to draw the physical setup even when I'm not really using it all that much. Um, so I can think of it as being powered by a battery um, over a few boards. The question tells me it's going to be 4.4 volts. And the way we are modeling um, how much uh, electric power is or how much electricity is used um, the small electronic device, I think I can model that with a, basically a register as a, a circuit element. So what you have is a 4.4 volt battery connected to this register, which is um, a kind of simulating your typical small electronic device. And uh, say that, uh, oh, I, I'm giving the resistance of uh, six kilo ohm, or what six kilo ohm is a 6,000 ohm. All right, uh, so it's asking for the current. This is where you kind of have to remember Ohm's law, and I'm pretty sure that's sort of what I'm telling you in the hint, uh, review Ohm's law. <laughs> so, uh, well, and, and I guess it actually gives me this uh, equation. So I guess I can just use them. The current, that's what it's asking for, is the voltage divided by the um, uh, by the R. Here, R would be this internal resistance or resistance, a bunch of things. All right, so uh, let me write this out. Uh, so I have um, the current is equal to voltage, uh, which would be 4.4 volts. Um, so, okay, so that's a voltage uh, divided by R, resistance, I should be able to get the current that's flowing through this circuit. So the resistance is um, six kilo ohm, or just writing it in basic as a unit, 6,000 ohm. All right, let me do that in the calculator. Uh, I don't need any scientific notation for that unless I really want to use it, 4.4 divided by 6,000. So now this is what I get, 7.3333. And I don't want you to stop there. I want you to see this power of, uh, or times 10 to the power of minus four. The question isn't asking me for my answer either in, um, I'm sorry. When, <laughs> trying to fall asleep again. Um, it, uh, so this is the correct answer if my uh, answer is supposed to be in the unit of ampere. But I am dealing with the unit of milliampere. And if you have forgotten in the useful information, you can see that milli stands for 10 to the power of minus three. So what I'm going to do is, all right, so I have this, um, value of current, that's uh, if, uh, um, oh, what am I thinking? That's, uh, uh, that's the value of current in amperes. And I need to express that in milliamperes. So let me write this up, uh, 7.33. Uh, so that's in ampere or times 10 to minus four. That is in amperes. And you want to convert this unit to milliamperes. So milliamperes, uh, you think through, okay, what, um, what other unit is uh, um, equivalent to this? And, oh, and that's gonna be ampere. And that works out nicely because this ampere will cancel out the ampere. And I guess the way I should write is uh, 
one ampere is equal to what's gonna be on the numerator. Uh, so, um, uh, what am I looking for? Well, uh, did I go to the useful information? Uh, in useful information, you get milli is 10 to minus three, which means if you're looking at one ampere, there should be 10 to the three or a thousand milliampere there. So let me put that in. Um, so this should be thousand milliampere. And here I can actually do this particular calculation by hand, especially now that I have this 7.33 already. Let me show you um, this as a kind of a illustration slash reminder of the, um, the exponent algebra that you might have learned. So this thousand milliampere can be expressed as 10 to the power of three. And, um, and the, 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 the way you do this calculation is quite simple if you know what you're doing. So let me go through step-by-step step of um, is, uh, assuming I'm someone who knows what they're doing. Let me just go through step-by-step. On a multiplication like this, what you really want to do is you want to separate the two parts. So you do the um, you do the calculation based on these leading numbers first, 7.33 divided by one. And then later on, you work out what this exponent would have been, 10 to minus four A times 10 to the three um, million. Um, Oh, I guess, yeah, 10 to, yeah, yeah, 10 to 3 milliampere, but then I'm dividing by ampere. So it's going to end up being uh, in amperes. Um, in amperes? No, in milliampere. In milliampere. So um, when you work out that multiplication of the, um, of the two values, then this is what you should get. Um, 10 to minus four times 10 to the three. And this is the exponent algebra rule. Um, this is, uh, these are two of the, uh, some of the common rules that you see. If you have a raised to the power of x plus, um, plus, sorry, not plus, times. Um, if you have that times, um, B raised to <laughs> the second number uh, raised to power, I guess there's no universal thing, raised to power of um, um, power of Y or minus four, then, oh, sorry, I, I don't know why I wrote B. It should have been, um, the, this should have been the same base. So I have, uh, 10 raised to the power of minus four for x, and then another 10 raised to the power of three for y. So let me do that. So a to the power of x times a to the power of y. In a case like this, you can simplify this to say a to the power of x plus y. And you could approach this using math, but in the interest of time, we'll say that you accept that to be true. Then what you need to do is I have this um, um, 7.33 times all these um, powers of 10. So let me simplify this first. All these powers of 10, they become, um, so it's gonna become a 10 to minus one ampere. So multiply that with 7.33, I get 0 0.733 um, times uh, times the uh, the milliampere. Um, so yeah, uh, or I guess I don't actually need times uh, 0 0.733 uh, milliampere. So. That should be the amount of current. Let's see. Sorry, I'm starting to fall asleep. So let me just test this as we go so that I don't go too far off into deep end if uh, um, I get an answer. <laughs>
<laughs> all right, clear all drawings. Uh, light, uh, 10, I'm oh, sorry, 100 watt light bulb operates on household line of some voltage. And while it's on, it has effective resistance of some resistance. Uh, it says calculate the amount of current flowing through the 100 watt light bulb while it is on. And um, this is something you are going to uh, read in the chapter that there's a, a power dissipated by a circuit. And the power dissipated by a circuit can be, um, oh, sorry, a, a power in an electric circuit is given by a current times the voltage. So um, we are given the volt. And even though we are given the uh, resistance, um, I don't think we need to use it uh, because in this expression for power, I already ha I have something that I can solve for I, the current. The current is power divided by the voltage. So um, I guess we'll try that. I think I can do this uh, on my calculator. So I'm going to say, um, uh, so the power here is just 100. Uh, that's the, the rating of the light bulb uh, divided by um, divided by voltage. Um, uh, I guess the, that's the 110 volt. So divided by 110, so 0 0.91 or 0 0.909. All right, uh, let's see. Sorry, I need to keep going as I, uh, keep testing as I go because I'm only gonna get sleepy. Uh, all right, that was correct. Finally, a uh, four long segment of wire. It is not unusual to have a resistance um, well, as large, yeah, one ohm is pretty large resistance for a, a wire. Remember, ideally wires uh, have zero resistance uh, to get a sense of the change of voltage, uh, voltage change across. Uh, um, so I'm looking for voltage change. Um, all right, I think I have all the units. So one thing that you should know about voltage change, the, the change in the voltage across the wire it's going to be the current through the wire times the resistance of the wire. It's a version of Ohm's law, or you know, it is Ohm's law. So you say that is equal to, um, I have the current of 6.5 amperes times the resistance of 0 0.8 ohm. So, uh, voltage change across the wire as well. I guess I just multiply this out. And here I have both amperes and ohm. So I have that promise in the SI unit system that one ampere times one ohm is going to give me one volt. So, I mean, let's hope that's the case. So, uh, so uh, I'm gonna put in 6.5 times 0 0.8. So the voltage change should be 5.2 volts. All right. Um, it's, uh, sorry, I'm falling asleep. Uh, it's kind of hard to think while uh, you feel sleep. <laughs> okay. Uh, so all right, all right. So that's all correct. I guess with the circuit, right? With the circuits, there aren't that many questions that require you to do uh, scientific notation. I mean, there are questions that require you to calculate, but um, um, not that many signs. So that's mainly because I think uh, when you go from static electricity to circuit, a lot of uh, uh, standard units become something sensible. Like a small AA battery has voltage of 1.5 volts. It doesn't have voltage of 10 to the minus 19 volts. Uh, let me just look at the other two questions. Uh, I guess, um, 
Oh, I have to do one, two, three questions. And not that much time, so let me just uh, quickly go through it. Uh, this time I'll just uh, uh, write things out um, without going too deeply into physics. Read the textbook, read the chapters, and uh, that'll help you understand. So, okay, the typical power rating of microwave is about 1,000 watt. How much current uh, microwave oven rating of 1,200 watt throws while it's on? Okay, so I think the way it's worded, I don't really need to care about thousand watt. I don't care at all. Because the question is asking me about a microwave oven that has 1200 watt. So how much current? Um, um, all right, so I think I have some sense of what formula I need. I need the formula for power. So I am using power is the current times voltage. But what I'm going to change is because the question is asking for current of, so I really have this need to have solved this, have this solved for current. So I can imagine multiplying both sides by one over V. Then what you end up with is current is equal to the power that you are looking for divided by, um, divide by voltage. So, oops. Uh, let me ratio. So, all right, I guess I'll just plug in the numbers. So I have for power, it's going to be 1200 watt. And um, voltage, if it's the same as regular household, then that's uh, 110 volts. So divide by 110 you get 10.9 ampere. That's actually a fairly large amount of current if we are dealing with electronics or, um, yeah, it's a fairly large value. Uh, let's see. Um, I, I guess I'll do B. Uh, I won't say too much. I'll just, uh, uh, just write down uh, what it should be. So typical value at low amperes is, so this 15 ampere is the current that uh, I'm going to be dealing with how much power can be drawn for any wall socket. So wall socket means um, the voltage is equal to 100 and, oops, 110. Um, 110 uh, volt. I don't know if I need to change anything. <laughs> um, um, and the power, I had a formula before. Power is equal to current times voltage. And you can read more in the uh, chapter section about where that comes from. So I guess I just plug in the numbers. Um, so plugging the numbers, it's uh, the current, 15 times the voltage, 110. <laughs> 1650. So that should be the number of watts uh, that, um, yeah. So 1650 watt, 1650 watt. Um, all right, uh, last one here on electric stove that I may use while it's on. Um, wait, did I already do this? Yeah, we did this already, kind of, in part A. So, um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, so let me just, uh, I don't need to do that one. For part C, look at part A, the only thing that's changed is the, the number for the uh, power usage. Um, so I have two more questions left. Let's see, household electric power is usually built in units of cents per kilowatt hour. How many joules is one kilowatt hour? Um, um, all right. Um, I, I guess I should do this unit conversion. I think it's going to be instructive. Uh, by the way, you can also do this. Um, Wolfram Alpha is unit aware. So if you say one kilowatt hour in joules, it will actually be able to tell you what that is. Um, it tells you how it interpreted your input, and it gives you the answer, and that's going to be the correct answer, but let me, let's go through that so that we, we know how to do this by hand. So let me start by writing out this one kilowatt hour. So one kilo, that's going to be times 10 to the 3 uh, watt times hour. 
And this is where your knowledge of the interrelationship between units is important. So if you know that one watt, which is unit of power, is related to energy by change in energy per time, or that one watt should be uh, one joule per second, then that'll help you work out what this watt times hour is. This is the unit of power times unit of time. Uh, so that, oh yeah, when you do the unit of something like one second, then you can see on the right-hand side the second cancels out and you get the unit of energy back. So here, this is already fairly close. I already have watt, I don't wanna change that. So what I really need to change is the hour. Instead of this being hour, I need that to be one second so that I can say what times a second is joule. So, um, so this is how you convert to unit. Once again, you multiply by a factor of one. So here, my factor of one looks like this. On the denominator, I want hour. So let me put one hour. This is so that hours will cancel out. But if I just randomly start multiplying my numbers, that changes my number. So I want to be multiple by, multiplying by fraction, where the numerator is the same as the denominator, same physical quantity as denominator. So one hour is 60 minutes. And I can, uh, but minute isn't what I want. I want seconds. So let me do this one more time. So I want you to cancel out the minutes and one minute is a 60 seconds. Okay, now I think I have everything. So if I take this, multiply it by 60 times 60, that'll give me what times a second, what times a second, which is joule. Okay, so let me do that on my calculator. So it's gonna be um, so, uh, a thousand, so, um, or 10 to the power of three or 1,000, ah, 1,000 times 60 times 60 is equal to uh, some big number, three, six, zero, and then five zeros joules. And I guess that's the unit it's asking for, so I'll just pass that in. Three, six, and then five zeros. One, two, one, two, three. So that should be it. All right, um, so that's a, a unit conversion. We, we did cover that like in chapter one or two, but it's good to review. Um, <laughs> you'll see more of that. Uh, question seven. Um, uh, yeah, I should do this one. I remember getting a question about this one uh, in the previous semester, so I should do it. So this question gives you all the information. I think hint kind of tells you. So the one thing you do have to know, uh, which is why I give that to you in the hint, is that you have to know that a AA battery has uh, provides a voltage of 1.5 volt. You kind of just have to know that. <laughs> if you don't, that's why I give that to you in a hint. That uh, what I do is okay. So um, it's asking me uh, how much energy. So if from the previous question, I know that amount of energy can be expressed as amount of power per some duration of time. And this power from having read through the chapter section and everything, I know that power, electric power, is equal to current times voltage. And so the, the amount of energy stored in a battery should be, um, so I'm just gonna flip this around so that at the voltage that the battery provides, it should be amount of current. It's uh, um, able to provide at any given moment over uh, what the duration of that, um, uh, over how long a duration the battery can provide th that amount of current. And that's actually written into this unit of 24 or unit of milliamp hours or um, so milliampere, milliamp hours is all it means is milliampere times hours. So really all we have to do is I want to convert these hours 
into seconds. I want milliampere expressed in terms of ampere. And oh, and I need to multiply by voltage. So, uh, so let me kind of write this out. So the amount of energy that's stored in the battery is going to be equal to the voltage, 1.5 uh, 1 times the current. Uh, I'm just going to say it's uh, going to be providing current of 2,400 milliamps, or let me make it a little bit easier for myself. Oh, that's a 2.4 ampere, uh, 2.4 ampere uh, times the duration of time. So for this milliamp hours, if I'm getting 2.4 amperes, then it will last exactly one hour or um, or you can do the unit conversion, same thing that we did just now. And when you do that, you will see that this is uh, uh, 3,600 seconds or you know, 60 times 60. So multiply all this out. And these are all basic SI units, volt, ampere, seconds. So your final unit here should work out to be joule. So all I need to do is just to work out the numbers in a calculator, 1.5 times 2.4 times 3600. So it stores energy of 12,960 joule. So 12,960 joules. So let's put that in, make sure that it's the correct answer. The so typical AA battery stores, 12,960 uh, uh, joules. So I think that's all the calculation questions. Um, hopefully this is a kind of a good review, reminder, practice. Um, <laughs> um, and uh, uh, yeah, and so uh, I guess uh, I did all the calculation questions so as you're doing it. So your numbers will be different, but uh, you can kind of follow along in this video or uh, bring this video up in the uh, correct part or the one that's handling the same question and uh, follow the same approach if you feel lost anywhere.